कल्पना कीजिए कि आप पिछले सिक्स महीनों से स्पेस की जीरो ग्रेविटी में रह रहे हैं धरती से करीब 250 मील ऊपर इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन पर अपने दुनिया को उस नजरे से देखा है जिसे बहुत कम लोग ही देख पाते हैं आपने वेटलेसनेस को एक्सपीरियंस किया और एज एन एस्ट्रोनॉट अपने कई ग्राउंड ब्रेकिंग एक्सपेरिमेंट को भी कंडक्ट किया और अब आपके घर वापस आने का समय है आप उस खतरनाक अंतरिक्ष में तैरती एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी जगह को छोड़कर धरती पर वापस कैसे आओगे अंतरिक्ष से दोबारा धरती पर वापस आना किसी भी स्पेस मिशन का सबसे जटिल और खतरनाक भाग होता है ये इतना आसन नहीं होता कि स्पेसक्राफ्ट लहराते हुए बड़े आराम से धरती पर उतर जाएं, जैसा अक्सर फिल्मों में दिखाया जाता है इसमें कोई शॉर्टकट नहीं होते गलती की कोई गुंजाइश नहीं सिर्फ और सिर्फ प्रिसाइज प्लानिंग फिजिक्स और बहुत ज्यादा हिम्मत चाहिए आज की इस वीडियो में हम डिटेल में जानेंगे कि आखिर अंतरिक्ष यात्री धरती पर वापस कैसे आते हैं हम हर स्टेज और हर प्रोसेस को देखेंगे स्पेस स्टेशन पर अनडॉकिंग से लेकर अर्थ पर टच डाउन तक तो तैयार हो जाए री एंट्री के लिए क्योंकि ये जर्नी बहुत ही थ्रिलिंग होने वाली है लाइफ ऑन इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन वाई वी नीड टू कम होम इससे पहले की हम धरती की अपनी वापसी यात्रा को शुरू करें आई ये जानते हैं कि आखिर एस्ट्रोनॉट्स को स्पेस स्टेशन से वापस धरती पर आना ही क्यों पड़ता है स्पेस स्टेशन पर भी जिंदगी काफी मजेदार है आप कर सकते हैं वंस इन अ लाइफ टाइम एक्सपीरियंस लेकिन वहां की लाइफ डिमांडिंग है ऑन द इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन एस्ट्रोनॉट्स लिव इन माइक्रो ग्रेविटी विच कॉजेज चेंजेस इन देर मसल्स बोन्स एंड फ्लूड्स ओवर टाइम ऑन द इंटरनेशनल स्पेस स्टेशन देर इज ऑलमोस्ट नो ग्रेविटी which is why our body doesn't need strong bones and muscles the result of this is that the body starts losing muscle mass and bone density even after 2 hours of exercise noticeable unwanted changes in the body can be observed physical health aside staying away from loved ones also starts to bring mental changes we should not stay isolated from our loved ones for too long this is also not right for mental health in astronauts The task of assessing, monitoring and providing support to mental health often keeps astronauts connected. They are advised to rest in between so that they stay healthy and continue working ahead. The physical and mental demands of isolation along with the system's filtration, life support system and backup equipment operation are also time limited. The International Space Station is already a complete environment. but regular monitoring and maintenance are essential to ensure the reliability of its systems after some months the international space station requires the replacement of essential instruments and systems to ensure smooth operation astronauts rely on regular maintenance recovery and the replacement of scientific instruments to ensure the systems continue to function effectively and when the process of returning home begins astronauts and ground control work together in coordination to ensure everything goes smoothly living in space requires assessing and adapting earth life the process of returning begins well before astronauts enter the return capsule the journey of leaving the international space station takes months of preparation houston or even moscow based mission control coordinates with the astronauts to begin the process of detaching the spacecraft from the international space station and starting the return journey currently Astronauts use Soyuz capsules to return from the space station, a system that has been in use since the 1960s or the newly developed Crew Dragon spacecraft is also being utilized. On the return day, astronauts enter the capsule and take their space suits with them. Whether it's the spacecraft, be it Soyuz or Crew Dragon, these suits are designed to protect the cabin from depressurization or during any emergency situation. The space suit also comes in handy. Everything inside the spacecraft is double checked from the lab support system to navigation control. All astronauts remain connected to the control center and every piece of equipment is monitored in real time. Once all systems are checked and every signal is given, the process of undocking from the space station begins. In reality, undocking is a very slow and controlled process. In this process, spacecraft pods and think table move from one platform to the next. On the coach hinge, the second hinge is far from this side of knee frame, which is an autonomous spacecraft. 
onboard computers handle this entire process. And after undocking from the International Space Station, the spacecraft is carefully prepared for re-entry. The deorbit burn is performed once the spacecraft safely moves away from the space station, and after that, it becomes the most critical step to execute the deorbit burn. This maneuver is critical because it determines how the spacecraft's re-entry will occur and where it will finally land on Earth. The spacecraft is still orbiting in space at a speed of about 17,000 miles per hour, and at this speed, the capsule will remain in Earth's orbit for now, until its speed is reduced and it is brought down into the Earth's orbit properly. During this maneuver, the onboard engines of the spacecraft are fired for a few minutes, so that the spacecraft's speed is reduced enough for its orbit to change. But this process is a two-step procedure. The orbit change should happen within a perfect time frame, otherwise the spacecraft may suffer. This will ensure the connector works properly. This orbit change normally takes less than 5 minutes. This ensures the spacecraft remains stable and does not spin out of control. After this, the engine fire is shut down so that the spacecraft can enter freefall condition. Astronauts who are sitting in this capsule and heading home are still traveling at a very high speed. They are traveling at a speed of about 6.21 miles per second. Sorry, I cannot translate this text as it appears to be corrupted or improperly encoded. Re-entry scenarios are shown in the diagram. Due to the corrupted or improperly encoded text, I am unable to provide a proper translation. Due to corrupted or improperly encoded text, I cannot provide a proper translation. Once a spacecraft enters the atmosphere, it experiences both capsule and crew enduring the intensity of the atmosphere. At this point, the spacecraft is traveling at thousands of miles per hour due to its speed. And to reach the surface, it relies on the motion layers of the atmosphere to slow down. The spacecraft and the air molecules generate enormous heat due to friction, reaching up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat is so intense that if a heat shield is not installed on the spacecraft, it could disintegrate completely. But here, heat alone is not the challenge. Just as the spacecraft begins to face the intense atmosphere, at that time it has to withstand massive g-forces. And sometimes this can be up to five times our normal force of gravity. Imagine if suddenly your body becomes five times heavier and you are falling through the atmosphere amidst flames and debris. Spacecraft and the friction in the atmosphere cause yet another major problem and that is plasma blackout. When the spacecraft enters the atmosphere at high speed, the heat generated around the capsule creates layers of heated plasma which block radio signals. During this critical time, communication between the astronauts and mission control is completely lost. And during this period, both sides have to rely entirely on the spacecraft's onboard systems. For this, careful planning is done well before the re-entry. During re-entry, even the slightest and most critical change in angle affects the re-entry. If the spacecraft deviates slightly from its planned trajectory, it could quickly burn up due to friction. But if the angle is too shallow, it will bounce off the atmosphere like a solid surface and drift back into space. Just like skipping a stone on the surface of a pond. Similarly, during this process, the spacecraft must enter the atmosphere at just the right angle and re-enter the Earth's orbit correctly. Just like how the atmosphere gradually thins out as you ascend into space. Due to the drag of the atmosphere, its speed starts to decrease. And as it reaches the lower layers of the atmosphere, its speed reduces even further. But the speed is still not slow enough for the capsule to land safely. And this is where parachutes come into play. The parachute deployment and finally the descent re-entry heat and G-forces are survived, after which the spacecraft enters a critical phase of landing. 
at an altitude of about 1,800 feet sensors in the parachute detect the first parachute deployment. This is the first parachute that opens and this helps stabilize the spacecraft during its descent. When it completes its job, the main and larger parachutes of the spacecraft are deployed, which significantly reduce the spacecraft speed. Around 1520 MBEPH, around 1520 MBEPH, around 1520 MBEPH, around 1520 MBEPH. If astronauts are observed, this phase of their journey seems quite peaceful. They experience a sense of anticipation during parachute deployment and the gradual descent of the space capsule. The final descent hasn't happened yet. Here, every journey ends with a space capsule in the same way, but after this, the routes change. If you are in the Soyuz capsule for launch, the retro rockets are fired before touchdown. So the impact speed of the space capsule is also reduced. By hitting the spacecraft's ground, these small rockets slow down the rocket so much that the space capsule can land safely. If these thrusters don't work, the touchdown can be much harder. Before touchdown, the capsule's speed is significantly reduced. That's why astronauts don't feel much energy impact. If you are landing on Earth from a crewed spacecraft, the spacecraft slows down significantly in the atmosphere, which helps reduce the impact. There, the recovery teams are already prepared in advance. They first conduct medical checkups and then the astronauts are sent for the next process, landing and recovery. Finally, when the spacecraft is about to land, either on solid ground or in the middle of the ocean, after staying in space for months, the astronauts have now officially returned to Earth. But the landing is just the beginning of the recovery mission. During the landing, the astronauts touch down in a remote area for recovery. Landing sites are carefully monitored and selected. Recovery teams ensure the astronauts are safely extracted and do not face any delays in returning from the capsule. After staying in microgravity for months, astronauts' bodies undergo significant changes. The body adapts to zero gravity, but returning to Earth can be a challenging experience due to gravity's effects. It's not easy for their bodies. Walking on Earth becomes extremely difficult initially. Astronauts find it difficult to control their bodies and they struggle to maintain balance. This is why recovery teams help them walk again. In the case of SpaceX Crew Dragon, it lands in the ocean near Cape Canaveral. This is where recovery teams are already waiting on the ship. Boats are sent to retrieve the space capsule. After this, Carefully, astronauts are taken out of the space capsule and brought to the recovery vessel. And after this, the medical teams assess their condition in a similar manner to a Soyuz landing, and they are taken through several procedures to prepare them for re-entry into Earth's environment. In both cases, astronauts undergo several medical evaluations to ensure their well-being so that it can be determined whether their health is stable or not. Due to staying in space, the changes that occur in their bodies they are also subjected to weeks or even months of recovery. Their muscles and bones start to weaken. They face difficulties in functioning normally again. But over time, everything starts to feel normal again. Returning to gravity is always challenging for astronauts after successfully completing a mission. They have returned to their home and are now with their loved ones. But nothing was said about the astronauts experience being left behind. Yes, their space experience was extraordinary. Is that feeling simply adrenaline? I mean, it's just like you have survived this incredibly crazy 15 minutes of fire and parachute. You're flipping around, smashing into the ground at high speed and you survived. I wanted to talk to my wife and... My parents, I just wanted to celebrate life. So friends, this was a journey filled with extreme inspiration and determination until reaching the pinnacle of success. This is a very complex process in which precision science and technology play a crucial role. From analysis to docking and then re-entry, ensuring survival and touchdown on the final destination, every step is a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance. Friends, what did you think of this journey? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, please like it and share it with your friends. For more such videos, subscribe to the channel and enable the bell notification. Friends, see you soon.